Yes, uh, good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my next in a series of tutorials. And this one will basically show you uh, the very basics of animation in 3D Studio Max uh, as it relates to building aircraft. What we have on the screen here is a simple landing gear and I'm basically going to show you how to animate it uh, so that it rotates uh, approximately 90 degrees up like that. Uh, one of the first concepts uh, that uh, I've got on my screen here that I should show you is, is the thing called linking. And uh, if you'll notice that this uh, landing gear shaft is actually only one object, but if I rotate it, all the objects rotate with it. And that's basically linking, is what does that. You'll notice on the screen here that I've got a shaft, a couple of cross pieces, uh, basically a, a wheel shaft right there, and two tires. And they're all linked together. Now if you want to see uh, how they're linked together, just press the H key and you'll notice that all of our list of our objects, if I go display subtree, it'll show the actual hierarchy. You'll notice the nose gear, which is the shaft, is the highest uh, in the tree with two objects below it. Line 03 has one object directly below it and cylinder 03 has two objects. And that's basically how they're linked together. Now to show you on the screen how they're linked, it's that tire is linked to the shaft, that, that tire is linked to the same shaft, the shaft cross piece is linked to this object which in turn is linked to that object and this one is also linked to that object and that's why they all rota rotate together like that so basically uh, how you do an animation is basically take your uh, the object in the highest uh, the highest up in the tree the hierarchy and rotate it and of course everything will rotate with it so one of the other concepts we got to look at is the number of frames down here at the bottom we have frame 0 all the way over to frame 1. Uh, in this case here, the or sorry, frame 100. Uh, the default uh, for 3D Studio Max is 100 frames of animation. Uh, this can be changed by simply uh, right clicking here and changing the length right here. You can change it. I'm not sure what the upper uh, limit is, but 100 will do for now anyway. So basically what we do is we take our uh, uppermost uh, part and we're going to animate it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to down here to set the key to turn your animation mode on. Set a keyframe at frame 0, which will of course put a keyframe there. Move it over to frame 100. And we're going to rotate our shaft approximately 90 degrees. Right there, set another keyframe. Turn key mode off. Replay it. And now if you move the frame counter, you'll notice that it rotates. Now, there is one concept too that you should know about, and that's key filtering. If you go on the key filters, you'll notice that you can, you can change position, rotation, scale, and different parameters. Because we're only doing rotation, all we want to ever activate is rotation. So we would then make sure rotation is checked and everything else is off, which it is in this case. So we've got our basic animation right there and if we were to click on the play button, play animation, we'll notice that it plays all by itself and of course it'll rotate and go back around. Now let's look at another concept and that's the keyframes. Basically keyframes are simply points in the animation where changes take place. In our animation of course the, the animation takes place over a hundred frames between frame 0 and frame 100 which is actually technically a hundred and one frames but um, Let's just say, for example, we wanted to uh, have the, have the uh, right now, if you look at it, at frame 50, the thing is rotated approximately halfway. Well, what would happen if, for this particular landing gear, if it only rotated a quarter of the way in the first 50 frames? Well, that's actually quite easy to do. You would uh, go back to here, turn on set key, go to your frame, frame 50, let's rotate it back a bit now so that it's right there, just barely moved, basically. Right there. And set a key. Turn off set key. And now if we rot you rotate it, you'll notice that it actually rotates and then it gets really fast at the last because and where this comes into play, this is kinda hard to visualize maybe at this point in time, but basically what you've got to do is what would happen if you had to rotate the shaft. So, let's say, for example, you had to rotate it in a different direction. So we would turn on set key. Let's go up to frame 50 again. 
but this time we're going to rotate the shaft in this direction just slightly there and set a key right there see now it, it actually rotates back and it'll actually rotate up into that position and into this position and you'll notice that that's basically how you change animation is by keyframes. By changing key points in your animation, say right there, you wanted it to rotate this way and set a keyframe. So now it'll it'll start off in that position and it'll rotate up to there, up to there, and into its final resting position. And that's how you make changes in your animation. And that's for things where landing gear don't come straight up. Maybe they rotate 90 degrees on the way up so that the landing gear will fit into the landing gear well. Um, basically, that's it for animation when it comes to uh, aircraft as far as uh, this type of animation. Uh, I probably should actually touch on another type. So what I'll do is I'll bring in my, uh, my A7 Corsair and I'll give you an idea of another type of animation that, uh, in fact, a large number of flight sims actually do, and that's called automated animation. On this model, we have a flap and an aileron right there. Okay, we have our left aileron and our left flap. Mm -hmm. The type of animation that things like uh, Flight Sim 2002 and even Strike Fighters do is what's called automated animation. That animation is based on the name of the part. So in the case of left aileron, the, the engine that you're running it in knows what left aileron is supposed to do. Now if I go in here, you'll notice that if I take this and I rotate it like this, you'll notice that it, that it rotates. Actually, I've got to change one thing. I've got to change it to local. There we go. Now it'll, you'll notice that it, it rotates the proper way. The engine, the game engine does that automatically because it's named left aileron. Uh, now, what you'll have to look up, of course, is the documentation for the particular game that you're using. Uh, in the case of Strike Fighters, there's some uh, fairly decent uh, uh, tutorials or uh, explanations out there on how it does that and how it's named. And that actually does come with the uh, the documentation that comes with the uh, the exporter. Uh, so that's basically an, another example. The same thing, of course, with there, with our rudder, and uh, with our elevators as well as you can see they rotate up and down so that's the other type of animation uh, unfortunately there's not a lot I can tell you because I'm trying to keep this game on specific uh, maybe I'll create another tutorial in the future for maybe strike fighters uh, by itself so that's pretty much about it for animation uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to contact me at my email address and thank you and have a nice day